Hello, welcome to the Village of Sayward Community Wildfire Protection Plan. This is a video presentation that is supplementary to a formal report submitted to the Strathcona Regional District and the Village of Sayward Emergency Coordinator. The full CWPP report and maps can be downloaded from the SRD website for further reference. My name is Colin Filleter. I'm a professional forester from Suave Air that helped write this report, along with my colleague Cynthia Liu, also a professional forester. In this video, we will be covering some background information on the village of Sayward, looking at the local wildfire threat, the local wildfire risk, discussing the FireSmart program, and then reviewing 34 recommendations made in this report. The area of interest for this project is a two kilometer area around Sayward and any surrounding areas that had more than six structures per square kilometer. The area of interest is shown by the yellow line on this map also known as the Wildland Urban Interface. There is some overlap with Sayward Valley, but that is covered in another CWPP for Electoral Area A. As part of this report, we conducted a local wildfire threat assessment based on a GIS analysis using mapping software. Wildfire threat is based on fire behavior associated with a particular fuel type. This behavior includes head fire intensity and spotting impact. It is also based on historically recorded fire density within an area, including both human-caused and lightning-caused ignitions. Based on the spatial analysis, the AOI was classified into threat classes, ranging from no threat, such as water, to extreme threat. Most of the area within this AOI was classified as low or moderate, and as you can see on the map, that's shown in green and yellow. The most recent wildfire to impact the Sayward area was in 2019, when a human-caused fire within the AOI occurred, it was human-caused by burning debris piles and then spread into logging slash in some nearby mature timber. No life or property was damaged. Using the threat classification, the next step is the local wildfire risk. This classification was done again using spatial GIS using multiple factors to determine the risk. It was based on some of the factors were wildfire threat proximity, fire spread patterns, which is impacted by wind and slope. Proximity has a significant impact on the risk. Fuels that are within 100 meters of the kilometer are at a higher risk than the same fuel type that might be a kilometer away from the community. The AOI on this project is classified into risk categories from low to extreme. Moderate risk, which you can see is yellow on the map, is the most common area the most common risk throughout this AOI. High risk areas tend to be closer to the structures within the community. The red outline on the map shows an area called the Wildland Urban Interface 100, or the WUI 100, and that is the 100 meters surrounding the community. The WUI 500 is the 500 meter radius around the community. As you can see on the map, most of the areas are moderate, with a few pockets of high risk. The FireSmart program is a national initiative to provide communities, property owners, and residents the tool to assess fire hazards around their homes and then provide them with strategies to start reducing those hazards. FireSmart is a shared responsibility involving all levels of government and involves participation from both the private sector, community leaders, as well as the public. This photo here shows a neighborhood in Fort McMurray after the 2016 wildfire. As you can see, some homes burned while others did not. Fire smarting of these homes may have played a factor. Embers and sparks often cause a significant proportion of structure ignitions. Fire smart assessments are done to assess public and private property to determine what can be done to make the structures and property more resistant to fire. A key aspect of the fire smart program is the structural ignition zone, which is comprised of four different priority zones, moving from the home outward. Each zone is assessed separately and the key judging criteria is based on zone proximity, vegetation, and structural building materials, as well as the location. This community wildfire protection plan makes a total of 34 recommendations. However, we will highlight the 17 highest priority recommendations first in a greater detail. We will then look at the medium and lower priority items later in the video. Recommendations are prioritized based on numerous factors and importance, including reducing the likelihood of a wildfire spreading into the community, reducing impacts to critical infrastructure and property, and reducing the negative economic and social impacts to the community. 
Evacuation routes are essential in extreme wildfire events when community members must leave the community, while access routes into the communities for emergency personnel, such as firefighters, are equally important. Sayward has begun the process of planning and mapping these routes with an outside consultant. They should make them well publicized when the evacuation routes are completed. Based on the local wildfire risk mapping that we discussed earlier, we identified four different areas that would benefit from having fuel management prescriptions done to reduce the risk. These potential treatments areas include large blowdown tree patches adjacent to the community, standing timber susceptible to burning, and slash accumulations adjacent to Sayward Road. The next step is having a qualified professional develop specific site level prescriptions for how to proceed with managing these areas. Some of the worst fuel accumulations in Sayward are on private land within the village boundary. Policy tools such as bylaws, the Wildfire Act, and the Fire Chief's Authority should be assessed for enforcing removal of these fuels on private land. Fire smart assessments are the first step to identifying structures that are susceptible to fire and then can have fire smart management activities completed to reduce the risk. McMillan Drive and the area around Kelsey Recreation Center are two neighborhoods that should be the first priority to have fire smart hazard assessments. The 2019 wildfire was started by backyard burning. Sayward should offer periodic free alternative waste disposal options, such as free collection and chipping days. Recommendation 11 suggests having the full community wildfire protection plan and maps available on the village website, as well as the SRD website. This video could also be uploaded. Recommendation 10 looks at bringing FireSmart directly to the citizen. Homeowners should, homeowners should be encouraged to do the FireSmart 101 course online so they can begin to understand the program and how to make their home more FireSmart. Additional FireSmart information can be spread digitally on the Village and Fire web fire department websites so that homeowners understand the educational resources that are available to them. As many members of the community use social media, the SRD and Village of Sayward should regularly promote wildfire content on their pages, especially leading up to the fire season for heightened citizen awareness. Recommendations 13 and 14 recommend spreading fire smart and wildfire educational materials through physical documents, such as pamphlets, mail, and the monthly village newsletter. This is for members of the community that prefer physical documents over digital media. Recommendation 15 is to organize a community fire safety day that is a regular community event, focusing on fire safety related activities, fire suppression practice, and fire smart activities. It is recommended that this, is plan, this plan is shared with local forestry companies, both on private land and public land, as well as other industrial stakeholders such as BC Hydro. Ideally, they can work together with the village to reduce fuel hazards to make everyone safer. For fires that are outside of the village's hydrant system, a water tanker truck could be a key asset in suppressing them. It should be looked at to see if they could acquire one. As the main evacuation route along Sayward Road is mostly forested, regular assessments and maintenance should be planned to remove the danger trees and fuel buildups along the right of way. Additionally, the single lane bridge on Sayward Road should be considered for upgrade to reduce the occurrence of an accident or buildup during an evacuation event. It is essential that the Sayward Volunteer Fire Department continues to have their members receive training in structural protection and related to wildfires. It is also essential that they continue to practice these skills on a regular basis. The SRD should arrange annual meetings before every fire season with all stakeholders, including the British Columbia Wildfire Service, Emergency Management BC, and local fire departments to review emergency procedures, communication strategies, and the support services available. Having regular communication between these groups strengthens relationships and will ensure everyone is better prepared should a wildfire occur. We'll now look at seven medium priority recommendations specific to the village of Sayward. As FireSmart is designed to be a grassroots program, it is essential to find local FireSmart champions who will help lead the charge on localized FireSmart community. Finding a FireSmart champion is usually the first step in getting organized and implementing FireSmart within a community. Recommendation eight suggests having that FireSmart representative attend public educational events to deliver education materials and increase awareness around FireSmart. Events specific to Sayward can include Canada Day festivities, the health fair, and show and shine. 
Regular communication should occur between the Village of Sayward and the SRD to continually gauge progress towards implementing these recommendations. A yearly plan should be developed and continually monitored so that progress is always being made towards a more fire resilient community. As discussed earlier in recommendation nine, there should be an emphasis for moving away from backyard burning of woody debris and waste. When Sayward begins to offer other alternatives as, such as hauling it away or chipping, it is essential that these alternatives are communicated to the public. When entering Sayward, most people drive by the visitor's center on the corner of Sayward Road and Highway 19. Installing a fire danger rating sign would draw attention to the current fire danger within the community, as well as advise when fire bans are in effect. This would educate both local residents as well as visitors to the community. Recommendation 22 deals with looking for an alternative water supply source during times of drought. Options include stalling dry hydrants that are unpressurized but draw water from underground water sources to provide additional water supply. Additionally, it's an option to look into getting additional water storage options, such as the supply tanker that we discussed earlier. BC Wildfire Service requires safe landing areas for their helicopters and have expressed concern about landing in areas without designated paths. The Village of Sayward should designate an, an area within the community that, beats, that meets the helicopter landing requirements and keep this area maintained of brush and all hazards. The most logical spot would be next to the school. This spot should be well known to the Wildfire Service and marked on emergency preparedness plans. The SRD has a service called Connect Rocket that sends out emergency text messages and voicemails to landlines in times of crisis. Residents should be encouraged to sign up for this free service. The Sayward Volunteer Fire Department should do regular training on wildfire specific items, such as fire line construction, pump operations, and wildland hose operations. BC Wildfire has expressed interest in joining cross training exercises with the village. This would be beneficial to both parties for operations and developing a stronger relationship. We are now going to look at six low priority recommendations. In regards to any new developments within the village, Sayward should consider amending their bylaws to ensure new homes will be, have lower susceptibility to wildfire. Recommendation seven suggests that Fire Smart be brought into the school system in Sayward for students in K through five, as these children often bring home learning materials to their parents. M Branch is an industrial road that is usually mostly used by logging traffic, but offers an alternative evacuation route to Sayward Road. The village should work with industrial users who maintain this road to establish a secondary evacuation route so that the village can have two routes and that are accessible by most vehicle types. As the fire department is mostly volunteers, they should always be seeking additional membership to ensure they have a strong force. Open houses and social media are both good ways to connect with interested parties. Additionally, the village should seek volunteers to help with emergency support services and incident command systems. Recommendation 30 looks at reducing the likelihood of structure fires from wildfoot, wildfire embers by using sprinkler kits set up around homes and on top of roofs. This is a relatively low cost method that can be used in extreme wildfire scenarios. To conclude this video, we'll summarize what we've discussed. Based on our local wildfire threat mapping, Sayward is surrounded by moderate wildfire threat. For the risk, most of the community is at moderate risk, although there are some pockets of high. Many of our recommendations centered around FireSmart, including conducting assessments, building community awareness, and continued education. There's significant fuel buildups along Sayward Road that should be the first focus for reducing hazardous fuel within the community. Sayward should continue to work to update bylaws as well as continue emergency planning. We'd like to thank the following individuals for sharing their time with us throughout this process. This includes meetings, phone calls, field reviews, and information and data sharing. Sean Koopman for his vision encouragement throughout the project. Paul and Wes from the Village of Sayward for always answering our questions and taking the time to meet with us. Scott Boyd for providing LIDAR data that was so helpful in our data analysis. All of your ideas, insights, and feedback helped shape the CWPP. For further information, please refer to the document on the SRD website, which includes more detailed info, links to references, guidelines, and geo-reference maps. Thank you.